But when I started, I think we had roughly 6,000 Berkey and Cordy skiers, and now we basically have, uh, I think, 10,000. So it, it grew a lot, and a lot of that was because of a trail that we built back then, the Berkey Classic Trail, which is, mm -hmm. I've never skied it during the race. I've skied it, obviously, because we live up here, mm -hmm. uh, but not during the race, so that's one of the reasons why I signed up this year. Well, you know, obviously the, the race itself uh, has had to change. And there were two cancellations, 2000 and 2017. There were several years when the race had to be shortened because of poor snow conditions, especially on the southern half of the trail. Um, I, was, I had the privilege of serving on kind of an advisory council to the University of Wisconsin's research group that's really spent a lot of time on climate change issues. And that was very enlightening because of some of the data that they presented, which indicates uh, that this part of Wisconsin is going to be the the most affected by climate change. Snow pack, as on the trail itself, tends to hold up really well, even in warmer temperatures during the day, if it gets up, say, in the 40s, mm -hmm. as long as the temperatures drop at night to sort of refreeze everything. Okay. When that temperature at night exceeds 32 degrees, the snow starts to really disappear and disappears quickly. Uh, so climate change has big potential impact, of course, on the Berkey Ski Race, which is, has a big impact on economics around this area. And just, it's something that also leads uh, people to stay active. If you sign up for a big event like the Berkey, you're one, you typically want to prepare for it. So you stay active. Yeah, so we've noticed, yeah, over the years, there's, the winter isn't as great as it used to be. And that's a, yeah, a sign of global effects, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and I've done uh, lots of the world loppets around the world traveling, and it's definitely been a lot of snow hunting lately. You can never be sure that there is going to be snow. I've done at least two races all on artificial snow, and it's not really the experience that you are going for and um, yeah it's definitely evidence of climate change and hurting the climate not having enough precipitation. The two were, were canceled in 99 and 2016 because and in 2016 because of lack of snow, lack of snow. and heavy rains in you know February. Wow. So I have seen dramatic shifts and changes in the Berkebiner and growing up in Minnesota and being an outdoor enthusiast, uh, skiing has been one thing that has kept me connected like hockey did when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But the skiing is much less certain and pretty much totally dependent upon artificial snow. 95% oh. uh, of my training in the last four years has been on machine-made snow. Really? And machine-made snow is very expensive. Uh, since 1977, that was my first one, yeah. Wow. But we come back every year. I brought my kids originally when they were just in diapers, and, uh -huh. and now they, they're bringing their kids. We all stay together in uh -huh. a condo. Yeah, on they're, the they're Lake. here. Yeah, oh, so it's a family thing. Family thing. Yeah, yeah there was just a, a glum feeling around, and, and you wonder, what's going to happen? You never were sure. There were several years where they had a, a shorten the Berkey or call it off, and every year you run pins and, uh -huh. uh, what, what was it going to happen this year or yeah. not? And, yeah. yeah, if you're spending all that time and money to, to get to a place. Well, I'm from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and I'm here to participate in the Berkey. I'm doing the 50K. You, you never know, you can show up, you show up to the race, many of my colleagues, my friends, yeah. show up to races, they get there, and then it's canceled. So you've paid all this money to get there and you don't do your race. Yeah. Tra I've traveled all over the world, I used to work for the Red Cross, and I traveled to uh, some of the places with the most vulnerable populations, including in Africa, and I've seen first eye the, the impact of, of climate change and the most vulnerable people are the ones that are most affected by it. That's and that's not the rich countries, it's, uh, we are affected of course, we have bigger storms, bigger drought, bigger forest fires you've been getting. 
but in those countries, it's, they, it's their survival, right? Um, climate change for most of this winter, um, uh, we didn't have any snow, oh. and that affected us. We have a program uh, where we teach little kids to, to ski. We had 140 some little kids signed up to uh, learn how to cross country ski, and we had to cancel the first three or four sessions more than any previous year just because the, the snow was so late in coming. Well, our, our business is Anderson Maple Syrup, and we are located in Cumberland, Wisconsin, which is about an hour south of Hayward. And um, we've been in business for about 90 years, so that's where we notice it in the climate change in the trees a little bit. Um, over the years, my dad always talked about, you know, the average start date, the first cooking would be around the 25th of March, and we'd be done by Easter. Of course, Easter always moves, so that wasn't a really good ending time. Um, but the last 10, 15 years, there's been a lot of dates where we've started the 1st of March. Um, so that the start date has moved quicker, has moved earlier. Um, the other thing that we're getting is uh, the seasons are much more temperamental. You know, we generally have a lot of nice heating and cooling, and we need that to make the maple trees run. And those are fewer and farther between and they aren't always as drastic. Or they'll go, it'll get hot and it'll stay hot and it won't cool down again. We're seeing that the sugaring season uh, has been reduced. Um, it starts roughly nine days um, earlier than it used to and then ends 12 days or so um, earlier than it used to. Oh. So overall our season is, is shortening um, and uh, as we all know, the, the freeze-thaw cycles in that transition from winter to spring, summer um, are key for the trees to produce mm -hmm. sap. Mm -hmm. And um, as those become more variable or more intense or shorter in duration, uh, that reduces the amount of sap that trees can produce. Mm -hmm. um, and additionally, uh, with a warming climate, there's also a lot of insects, a lot of disease that um, can start to become a problem for the trees as well. Uh, the, the decrease in our cold water fish populations was absolutely what climate change looks like for us. And our family runs a fishing resort. And one of the big draws to this area is walleye fishing because they're cold water fish. You can't catch them farther south. That's one of the reasons people come this far north to fish. Uh, so that's a threat to our business. Um, something else I started to learn as I did more research is we are seeing more and more torrential downpours which wash nutrients into the lake, uh, fertilizers from people's lawns, and then you couple that with our on average warmer temperatures and you have a recipe for poor water quality, algae blooms and just yucky water that people don't want to be in and around, which impacts uh, the property values around the lake as well. I live near Sorona, Wisconsin on a small lake. Okay, and uh, you're going to share with us an experience that has to do with climate change and how that's impacted you. Yes, I think it, I think it has. And we got torrential rains over, you know, sporadically. And the, the loons taking turns, we could actually watch them with binoculars. They'd move, they'd push the eggs up higher away from the water. And it happened repeatedly until they were just underwater and they abandoned their nest and we were very sad because it was, it was fun to watch and then they were gone. Well, I am studying environmental policy in particular because I think that policy and government um, is one good way to make change, mm -hmm. I think. That's, I mean, there have been lots of options for my major. I could have done education or just studied the science or conservation, but I chose policy because I believe that's the best and fastest way to make change, even though government can seem like it's a slow process. Mm -hmm. I think making new policies in favor of the environment um, and mitigating climate change are, is the best way. Yeah.